And we are pleased to be joined now by Director of Hockey Operations, Richie Tebow, as day two of the 2021 QMJHL draft wraps up and is now concluded. Uh, Richie, overall, how do you think the, the day went for you and your team? Uh, we think it went very well. You know, we uh, were able to get some players that we, that we were really, really passionate about that our scouts looked at and, and really wanted. Uh, we were able to get a lot of versatility in our picks and uh, some, a little bit of balance around positions as well. So overall, extremely happy with the uh, crop of new Wildcats. And let's go back to this morning because um, there wasn't a whole lot of movement today or or last night for matter of fact but uh, what were the trade conversations like were you guys close on a few uh, a few areas and what were, what were those discussions over the last uh, day or so with you yeah you know the players that we picked this morning you know we we had looked at moving up into the first round last night we were, we were very close uh, to making a trade uh, to move up and then when we looked at the pros and cons of that, we decided to roll the dice and, and guess that one of those players or two of those players might be there at 21 and 23. Uh, and so we decided not to trade up and, and wait it out. And it turned out uh, we were able to get both our players uh, without having to move up into the first round. So we were very fortunate and very happy after pick 23 that we got the two players we wanted. Yeah, and maybe let's talk a little bit about those first two selections today. So at 21, we had ATN and 23, Alex. Talk about what you liked about those two guys and, and what your staff uh, really honed in on over the season. You know, I, we spent a lot of time with those players and Etienne uh, Morin was, was a kid that, you know, I interviewed a couple of times and very professional, great character. Uh, as a player, he's an offensive defenseman. He's a kid that will come in and, and work hard and, and wants to be a pro. He's a kid that is, has skill, uh, will play in the power play as he matures and develops. Uh, but we believe he's got all the characteristics of, of being a good Wildcat and uh, and has the elements that, that make you a good Wildcat. So extremely happy to, to have him as part of our organization moving forward. With Alex Mercier, he's a kid that, you know, when our scouts interviewed him, you know, I remember my scouts telling me that this was probably one of their best interviews that, that, that they had. Uh, this kid was a great communicator. Uh, he was uh, had a, had a uh, you know, he, he was a great character and he's a kid that we love on the ice. He's an offensive player. He's a kid that has hockey sense and puck skills and can skate well. And uh, we see him as a kid that will produce offensively uh, as he develops into a Wildcat full time. Ed, let's talk a little bit about also the the local guys that you drafted. There was a few New Brunswickers that, that made the list today. Um, even just looking at the season as a whole, scouting with, with all the issues with COVID, with Quebec not really playing this season. Um, talk about those guys that you got and and the the uh, ability to at least watch them this year and see some games live. Yeah, you know, we were fortunate in the pandemic year that we were able to, to watch some games live and we watched a lot on video, but some of the uh, New Brunswick kids as they came through Moncton and we were allowed to, to go watch, I was able to see some of them and our scouts were able to see them. And, uh, you know, there's kids that really stood out whenever we watched the game. You know, Lounsbury was a kid that's that's hardworking. He's he's kind of the glue on a team. He's a kid that doesn't get a lot of fanfare per se, but, you know, when you're there watching the game, he's a kid that contributes and uh, he's the type of player that the coaches love to have on their team. So. He's a guy that we really targeted in this draft that we uh, wanted to leave without. You know, he reminds me of some former Wildcats, the, the guys with the heart and soul uh, that maybe play under the radar but make a difference between winning and losing. You know, we've got some other kids, like Ryan Hackett, uh, you know, is a New Brunswick kid. And, you know, those are the types of kids that we want. You know, Ryan plays hard. He plays with an edge. And our guys really liked him. And overall, looking at the list, we added three more uh, goalies to the to the group today. Maybe talk a little bit about your discussions that you've had with your scouting staff about them and and the talent that you think you've added in that group as well. Yeah, you know, Kiefer Thompson is a is a goalie that we targeted, and he's a PEI kid, and he's a guy that our our goalie uh, scouts really liked. Uh, so he's a kid we we really want to leave the draft with. And Cooper Fleming is a younger goalie who's going to develop. Um, in Halifax and he, again he, we feel he's got a lot of potential uh, to move forward and our last goalie is uh, Keegan Warren you know Keegan was a little bit off the radar because he he played at a lower level for part of the year and then he was able to get called up into midget AAA in Newfoundland for the second half and played well into the playoffs and 
you know, he's a late birthday, so he's still very young. You know, he'll have an opportunity to come to camp and, and show us what he can do. But we're extremely happy with the, the crop of new young goalies that we can introduce to our program and uh, work into developing uh, to someday become a Wildcat. And we've got, I mean, last year we've had a great group of, great core group of young guys that uh, most of them will be back this year. But where do you see the biggest opportunity for these new, of our new 15 selected draftees? Where do you see the biggest opportunity for them to, to potentially fit into the lineup this year? Well, you know, draft day is all about, you know, an audition. You know, you have the right to come to camp and, and audition for a position. You know, where you're drafted when camp opened up really doesn't matter. You know, we have Alexi Daniel last year who was a late pick came into camp and and uh, really, you know, earned his spot and, and played, you know, all season long and, and earned rookie of the year. So it really does not matter where you get drafted. It's the work you do in the summer and, and when you show up at camp, if uh, you're going to fight for your spot. So, yeah, you know, we've got a lot of returning players, but I'm hoping that these new draft picks and new Wildcats will come prepared and uh, will uh, we'll fight to uh, win a job at camp and, and make the decisions tough for us because that's what we want is uh, we want tough decisions on who can be a Wildcat and, uh, and start the season with us. Yeah, I think like we said before, overall it was a, another successful draft in the books. Virtual again this year, um, but made the most of it. Maybe before we go, Richie, just talk here at the end um, with the U.S. draft, the two players that um, you selected in, in that grouping. Yeah, you know those those two players are, are players that we've uh, we've watched, we've had discussions with, and they both expressed an interest in coming to camp and finding out what the QMJHL is all about. Uh, you know, so they they have talked to me today about coming to camp, and we're excited to see and get them to uh, to see our program and see our facilities, and uh, and for us to see them a bit more now and, uh, and watch them play and and see if there's a match there. If it's our program, is something that they would like to. Uh, to pursue and uh, we'll kind of go from there and uh, you know but they're both talented uh, individuals and uh, we'd like for them to become Wildcats someday. And finally just to wrap up I know that uh, you and your team have put in a lot of work this year and it wasn't easy like I said with with all the virtual stuff again this year probably getting used to it a little bit now but hopefully this is yeah. this will be the end of it. Um, a lot of work went into this weekend, but now what does the next month and a half or so look like for you and your group uh, leading into camp? Well, for us now, it's, uh, you know, free agency. You know, we started that as soon as the draft ended. Uh, we invited a, uh, some kids to camp that we'll make announcements on that will join our camp uh, in August. Uh, that we, you know, kids that made it through the draft today and that we were able to invite to camp and have accepted an invitation. We have the European draft coming up uh, later this week in which we plan to select a, another talented player for our team. And then, you know, it's about getting ready for training camp. You know, training camp is uh, starting August 16th, which is not that far away anymore. Um, and then uh, the cycle starts again with the selection process and uh, the regular season starting in October. So we're excited. There's not much downtown, but downtime, but uh, this is what we want to do and, and get ready for the season. Yeah. It'll be here before we know it, that's for sure. Thank you for taking the time, Richie. And again, congratulations to you and your team on a, another successful draft. Thanks, Courtney.